This is my newest Angry Bird. So now I now have like three of them. Um, some of them you can see are up there on the uh, shelves <laughs> in my office. Uh, I think I'm going to get a pig next. Yeah, so I've got three of the birds. It's time for a pig. All right, welcome. Hello. Happy Tanabata. You're wondering what that is. Well, today is July 7th, and one of the minor Japanese festivals is today. It's the Star Festival. There's two lovers, Orihime, the princess, and the man that she loves, and they're separated, and they can only meet one day every year on the seventh day of the seventh month. And, uh, yeah, there's a whole story about it. But basically what happens is uh, there's a tree, a bamboo tree, and uh, Japanese people write little wishes. Um, I don't know if they're wishes for themselves or for their friends or loved ones. Um, probably for themselves, I guess. Something that they hope will happen. And they hang them on this bamboo tree. And uh, it's a festival that I sort of took part in when I used to teach at elementary school. So it was kind of fun. And the only reason I really remember it is because yesterday is my birthday. Um, so it's the day after my birthday. So I, I always remember, oh, it's Tanabata. I'll put a link down in the description. You can go check out Wikipedia. It'll tell you all about it. All right. The main thing we want to talk about and the reason you probably clicked is this little baby right here. Um, uh, my iPhone and why I have an iPhone now. One of my most popular videos is my Android Ktai video that I made back in January of 2011, about uh, three or four weeks after I'd first gotten my very first cell phone in Japan. And cell phones in Japan are called Ktai Denwa, or basically just people just abbreviate that to Ktai. Um, <clears throat> And it's got like 17,000 views now as of, uh, as of today. And a lot of people, even though it's like 29 minute vlog, really, I hope this one's not that long. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty popular. So I'm guessing that people want to know about cell phones in Japan and maybe uh, specifically the Android. Uh, but I switched. And uh, I just thought I would tell you a little bit about that and a little bit about um, iPhones in Japan. Um, Basically, I don't want to go into too long details about what happened with me and AU, but um, I don't like them anymore. <laughs> um, I went to America in March of 2011 and took my phone with me. It's a smartphone, so, you know, like, a, like an iPhone, most of you probably have smartphones now, um, you can access the internet. Well, um, I knew, I went to AU and I said, you know, can I use my phone in America? And he says, yeah, just be careful, you know. Don't use it a lot, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so I was, and I got back, and it cost me about $300 for one month. Yeah. So, but that included my fee. So it was like, it basically, after you took out my monthly fee and everything, I think I paid an extra $200 for the four weeks I was in America. So I thought, okay, well, that's about $50 a week extra. So when I took the phone again in summertime of 2011, um, I again tried to be really careful, turn it off, yada yada. And when I got back to Japan, uh, I got a bill, and it was there was it was about 300, you know, about three mon extra. And I thought, wow, okay, that's a lot, but I sort of knew, and I so I paid it. Well, then I got my next month bill, and there was an extra four mon on there. Because, you know, I'd gone over the span of two months in America, August and September, when I'm on break from my university. And uh, I thought that was outrageous. Uh, you know, an extra 7 mon, which is 70,000 yen, which with the exchange rate now is over $800. Um, it was, you know, like more than 100 bucks a week uh, to, to have my cell phone. I really, really didn't use it that much. And there's, you know, all kind of loopholes and things in the contract and... Uh, things you should know. Definitely do not use your Japanese cell phone outside of Japan. If you come to Japan, just don't, you know, take it with you on your trip to the airport and stuff and then turn it off, put it in your bag, and don't take it out again <laughs> until you come back to Japan um, is my advice in, in general there. Um, so I called AU and argued, and they tried to take the money out of my bank account, um, and I hadn't gotten paid yet, so luckily, you know, they would have just taken it out in the automatic withdrawal that they do every month. And that was the reason I knew about the three mon, is because they tried to take that out while I was gone, and I didn't leave any money in my bank account, barely. 
So I went just to the convenience and paid that as like my bill. And then when they tried to do it the next month, uh, you know, I, I started to argue with them. And we argued back and forth. And it's very difficult to argue. Jap Japan is supposedly the land of customer service, but they're also very, very, very stubborn. And a rule is a rule. There's no wiggle room. They, the only thing they would offer me was to split the payments up so I could take the form on and split it over the rest of the year or something. So it would have been like, you know, 5,000 yen times eight months or something. Anyway, so I said, no, I'm walking away. You're losing a customer. You guys are dumb. And <laughs> because I was paying like 8,000 yen a month for that Android phone with the service and, you know, buying the phone. And I said, look, you know, I've got a year plus on my contract. I'm going to walk away. So I did, and um, I switched to SoftBank. Now, the funny thing is, is right around that time that I was doing this, which was November of last year, AU was granted the contract to carry the iPhone. So I might have switched and gotten an iPhone anyway um, through AU and stayed a customer for even longer. But um, I walked away from them. And, you know, don't leave whole comments about, the situation. It was a hairy situation. Um, it's still sort of ongoing. Um, you know, it kind of went to what's what's I guess would be the equivalent of a bill collector. But there's nothing they can do. They're they're never going to get their money from me. So anyway, um, so that was unfortunate because I liked my Android. I was getting used to it, but it wasn't an iPhone. And I'm a Mac person. Um, I'm recording this on my MacBook Pro. You know, I've always enjoyed having my iPod, and um, I, I wanted an iPhone. If you go back and watch my Android video, I wanted an iPhone, and I just thought I couldn't get one because um, of the two-year contract. But it just so happens that right across the aisle, almost, from the Android store in my local mall is a SoftBank store, and I happen to have my Japanese friend with me. And I said, hey, let's just walk over to SoftBank after I gave my phone back and canceled at AU. Um let's just go to SoftBank and just ask, what do I have to do to set up? Do I need to buy the phone outright, et cetera, et cetera. So we went in, we talked to the guy, really nice guy, and he's like, nope, no problem. Do you have a credit card? And I'm like, yeah, an American credit card. He's like, okay, and you've got your um, Gaiko Jin Todoro Show Me Show, I think that's how you say it, and uh, which is your, you know, we colloquially, we call it the Gaijin card, your alien registration card. I'm like, yeah, of course. And uh, he's like, yeah, you can sign up, no problem. <laughs> so I don't know why, you know, other times I contacted SoftBank, they're like, no, you have to have a two-year visa. And, yeah, and he didn't care about my visa. Um, you know, I work locally, obviously, at the university, etc. Anyway, long story short, he had no problem. The only thing I couldn't get because I hadn't canceled with um, AU completely yet was I couldn't transfer and have the same number. And actually, SoftBank were running a deal where if you if you transfer to SoftBank from Docomo or AU to the other big KTI companies, they would give you the equivalent of about a hundred dollars off, you know, chopped up about you know a thousand yen per month for ten months, which is a mon, which is about one hundred and twenty dollars in the current exchange. I just couldn't qualify for that, but I'm like no problem. So I signed up for the the my iPhone. And um, uh, the, uh, ah, I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Um, the cost per month actually that I'm paying now and that I started paying, you know, way back when is lower than uh, my Android. So not only did I get the phone I always wanted to begin with, but I got it for cheaper. My Android was costing me about 8,800 yen a month, which is about $100. Um, and that's to buy the phone and have the unlimited plan and, you know, uh, soft AU service to make calls and stuff. Um, this is costing me about 6,600 yen a month. And that's to be buying the phone, oh, again, spread out over two years. And to have an unlimited plan as far as using the internet, etc. And I, again, I think I'm on like, uh, I'm on a, a fairly limited calling plan. Um, I think I can make 60 minutes worth of free calls a month. And then after that, it's, you know, per call or something. But literally, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know this now if you have smartphones, I use the actual 
phone function on this phone so rarely. It's just amazing how little I actually ever call someone on this phone. Um, I might make one call a week on this phone. Um, everybody, you know, Japanese people, you just text. You, you, if they're on SoftBank, you use iMessenger. And uh, yeah, you know, it's never going to come out. You can see some of the people. And uh, SoftBank, of course, send me um, their little, you know, it's all in Japanese message. Um, and, uh, you know, you just do the regular, you know, chat thing with people and back and forth if they're your friend. And then, of course, you get assigned a SoftBank email. So I've got kind of a little email in here that, you know, is easy to do with Ktai. And then, of course, I can do Gmail and Hotmail and everything else through the phone. So um, it's, just, it's just funny. It's ironic that I switched and I was all worried and blah, blah, blah. And it's just turned out to be like, you know, the silver lining of that whole ordeal and um, is, is getting this phone and getting it for cheaper which allowed me to get my iPad. So this is a SoftBank case for it. And um, this is the new Retina display. Um, <clears throat> uh, iPad 3, I guess, is the, is the name for it. So I went ahead and got the model, the 64 gig, um, the biggest memory. I got the model um, that can do Wi-Fi, and in America, I think you're calling it 4G now. We don't really have 4G in Japan yet, so it's basically 3G. Um, all right, so let me get down into some of the nitty-gritty. Some of you want to know numbers, and it's funny because the one, the one different thing about SoftBank, um, who used to be the only person you could get, they were the sole provider for the iPhone. Um, the thing about SoftBank now is they have competition from AU. AU, you can get the, the, the iPhone from them. So they put a lot of good like incentives. But the one difference is, is AU would just deduct the money, you know, say on the 20th of every month from my Japanese bank account, which is fine by me. Because the, the, the amount really doesn't change. It, the only way it would go up and be more than I would normally expect is if I just was mad calling people and went over my 60 minute limit, which, uh, you know, just isn't ever going to happen. Um, <clears throat> SoftBank, for some reason, they wanted a credit card. And of course, I don't have a Japanese credit card. Very few gaijin end up getting a Japanese credit card. There's really no reason to get one unless, I don't know, you were going to buy some furniture here or something and you just wanted to spread it out over payments. And uh, Japanese credit cards are really strict. I had a friend who had one. He missed payment one month and they turned off the credit card and that was it. All he could do from that point on was just pay off the balance. Um, and just to really quick while I'm thinking about it to reinforce the don't take your phone away if you come to Japan. Um, I had a friend who went to Thailand and she actually, I had talked on Facebook you know, among my friends about how AU had screwed me over when I went to America. And a, she had AU too and they charged her like 12 mon, which is like $1,400 for like, I don't know, she was in Thailand for only like three weeks or some, some ridiculous amount of money. And I was telling her, look, just walk away. Um, don't pay it. And, uh, you know, she ended up paying it. Um, but anyway, subject for another video, perhaps. So, um, so what happens? Oh, so getting back to my point. So what happens is SoftBank want a credit card. And so I said, well, I have an American visa. And they're like, that should work. And so they typed it in and, you know, I had money in the account, which is good. Um, and they said, yep, no problem. So we'll charge you on the 20th of every month. So it's weird. Like the 20th of every month would come and I would, if I checked my bank account on that day, I would see a little minus in my, you know, checking account where they had tried to take the money, but the money wouldn't really come out until like the fifth of the following month. It would take like two weeks for the money to process as a foreign transaction and actually be removed. But they would check on the 20th, like, do you have, you know, $100 in your account? So that was weird. Um, but fine. And so that, I set that up. 
And I got my, I transferred to this phone in November of last year. And in, I think, March or April, I decided, because of the special offer, to go ahead and get the iPad um, through the same company. And this is one of the reasons I did it, um, was because, again, I'm, I'm spreading it out over two years, and uh, I just wanted to add it and have one bill. And SoftBank were cool. So I got a bill the very first time, a combined bill, I got a paper bill in the mail from SoftBank. And I'm like, I know I had money in my account. Maybe on the 20th, I just had a little less than they needed or something. Because the very first month, they're adding in a few extra things. I think my bill the very, very first month was about a mon 2,000 yen. No, it was... Oh, I can't remember. It was, maybe it was about 12,000 yen. Anyway, uh, so I just I just open it up, and it, and it looks all red. And you think, oh, I'm all like, you know, uh, <laughs> late and stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it's just like, ah, I got to go. Um, so, uh, but I just went down. You just go down to a, any convenience store, like a 7-Eleven or a Family Mart or something, and you just hand them the cash, and you pay. It's very, very easy. So I thought, that's weird. Okay, I'm going to make sure I have enough money um, this time. And I got it again. And the thing was is, you know, it's it's a lot of, um, you know, Japanese on the bill, right? And right over here, I ha I took it, I asked my Japanese friend, I said, can you go with me, you know, to SoftBank one evening? And I just want to talk to the guy and really understand why they're having a problem with my billing. And she says, oh, it says right here that the first two times after you change your bill, you're going to get a paper bill. And then, you know, they've had time to process it and they will start deducting again. So even though they had been deducting, I'm getting this paper bill. And it's got the whole rundown of all the charges and, and everything. Uh, so yeah, so my current bill, as you can kind of see there, is, is 10,057 yen. So that's for the iPhone and the iPad together. So the iPad is basically costing me about 4,000 yen a month. That's to buy it over the course of two years and to have the ability to use Wi-Fi, which is free, of course. You know, you have to get a router or something in your house. And here at the university, Wi-Fi is no problem. And those are the two main places I use it, my home and at school. And um, uh, if I want to, if I'm on a train or like when I go to Nagoya next week, I'm going to Nagoya to see Sumo. Um, I can turn on 3G, so I can use it, you know, basically anywhere in Japan. And the, the only thing there is it's a very small amount of megabytes you can, you know, download or transfer or use up or something, and they start to charge you. And it, it can go as high as 5,000 yen in 3G charges, and then it tops out. And if you keep using it past that, they don't charge you. But you know, an extra 5,000 yen in your bill, that's an extra, like, you know, $60 in America. That would be quite a bit. So basically, I try never to turn on the 3G. The only place I have to turn it on, and I use it maybe for an hour once a week, is I have a separate job in an Aikaiwa language school on Thursday nights, and there's no Wi-Fi in that building. Um, the, the head teacher, you know, doesn't really use, you know, I'm the first teacher that's ever brought in, like, an iPad for educational purposes. And uh, so I have to sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll be discussing something, especially with my adult students, and I want to show them a picture of somebody on Google, or, you know, they'll say, oh, this Japanese movie star, blah, 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 and I'll be like, I don't know who that is, okay, and we'll type it into Wikipedia. Um, it's really handy and really, you know, useful to have um, as an educator. And um, uh, so I use the 3G a little bit then, but I've, like this past month, I got, you know, zero money. I, I didn't exceed my limit. So it's really a good way to set it up. Just make sure you use mostly Wi-Fi. And uh, my iPhone is, I think I pay like 1,500 yen. So about $20 a month of my bill is buying the phone. And then the other about, uh, what's that, 4,500 yen or uh, about $55 is my unlimited plan. Um, I can use the internet, blah, 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 as much as I want. But I do have, like I said, some limited amount on phone calls. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so I really like it. This is the 4S with the, you know, the voice activated, the Siri. And um, uh, I don't know anything about changing. Like if they come out with the iPhone 5 next year, how easy it will be for me to upgrade. But I'm very happy with this phone. Um, because I'm an Apple person, you know, the Android was good and I was getting used to it. And there's a lot of great apps on that and stuff. But I, I've I have an iPod Touch that I've used for years. You know, I'm totally conversant with iTunes and everything. So for me to get this device, um, just so easy for me to use, so intuitive for me as an Apple person. And then the same goes with, you know, my, my, uh, my iPod, uh, my iPad. Um, I just totally, you know, instantly knew how to use it and what to do. And um, we just bought some actually at the university. And I used them in class the other day um, because it has such a great camera and you can instantly watch the videos. Um, I had the guy, the, the students in pairs, they had to memorize a dialogue. And then they used the camera and they filmed each other. And then I could, I didn't have to watch each one individually. I just collected all the iPads and watched all the videos later and gave them points. And it was awesome. Anyway, somebody asked me actually because I now am pretty getting pretty good at education apps, especially with my younger students, my shogakse, my elementary school students. Um, at uh, you know, I have all these games that I don't really play that much, but I I use them for um, education. Um, and I'm going to make a separate vlog about that. Somebody asked me when I was talking about it with some jets at a function. Hey, can you tell us some recommend some good apps? for different age groups and stuff, so I will. So I'll make that video too. Um, so I think that's it. Um, I showed you the bill, and uh, I think I had one other thing to say about the iPhone versus the Android, and uh, I'm not going to remember what it was. But anyway, you know, if you have questions, put them down below. Um, uh, again, you know, I'm... I, I'm an Apple person. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. So, uh, a question a lot of you had on the last video is, can I bring my Nantaka phone, you know, whatever smartphone you have, to Japan? And I think back in the day when it was all flip phones and older style Keitai, which the majority of J Japanese still have, the smartphone is just now starting to take off. Most of my students, I'd say 75 to 80 percent of my students don't have a smartphone yet. Um, but it's weird as a teacher, just a real quick aside, is, you know, you, you see some kid working on his, you know, looking at his cell phone or something in class and you immediately want to say, hey, stop looking at your cell phone, put away, put away your cell phone. But for most of them, and me too, their dictionary, their Japanese to English dictionary is in their, their cell phone. And I use um, Google Translate, you know, all the time in my daily life. And... Uh, you know, uh, it's just so handy. You can even talk into it with the little, you know, speaker thing here and say the word and it will give you the meaning. And uh, so if you don't know exactly how to spell it in Japanese, you can say, you know, arigato. And, you know, it'll tell you, you know, what it means and how to spell it and show you the hiragana. Um, so the kids do that too. So like they all, a lot of them have, you know, canon word tanks or your, your typical electronic dictionary, but a lot of them use their K-Tai now as their dictionary. So it's really hard as a teacher because you can't be like, put away your cell phones. You know, on a test, on like a strict test, of course I don't let them use their K-Tai. But in daily class, I let them have it on their desk. And then of course some of them are just, you know, texting each other. Or I had some kids do PowerPoint the other day in a demonstration and they, they had all these Skype bubbles coming into their PowerPoint. I'm like, turn off your freaking Skype. Um, anyway, so can you bring this phone with you from America? I think you could. Um, I think if you have an iPhone in America and you want, you know, you don't want to upgrade, you, you like it and you want to keep it, bring it to Japan. And I think you can go probably to AU or SoftBank and just switch over to the SoftBank plan. Can you see my little SoftBank there? 3G. All my bars are in there. Um, I think I think that'll be okay. Uh, I, I can't, you know, I'm not an expert, so don't take me 100%. But I would bring it. Um, if you have a flip phone or some, you know, a BlackBerry or something, I don't think you're going to be able to use that in Japan. But since I could have bought this phone and walked into SoftBank and just set up the plan, which is what I thought I had to do way back when, 
before I thought they would give me the two-year deal. Um, I'm pretty sure you can bring your American iPhone to Japan and then just you know adjust the chip or something, and they'll you know wire it into SoftBank, and you'll just start paying um, for the service only, and expect to pay yeah 50, 60 bucks a month. Um, and so it's a good idea maybe to have if you want to use SoftBank to have a credit card in your name, um, you know, and it can be in an American or English or South African or Australian bank, as long as it's a Visa or MasterCard probably. Um, if you want to use AU, they should be able to do it through your Japanese bank. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, I intend to own this iPad, um, you know, after two years, and then, you know, if I, I'm going to take it to America and stuff. But I'm definitely going to find out before I use it. I mean, Wi-Fi only shouldn't matter but I will find out. And then obviously I'll have to maybe turn off the Japanese part of it if I ever go back to America to live and just keep it uh, as, you know, as an iPad and then get some kind of American plan. Um, but yeah, so I think you can bring your iPhone or probably any smartphone. Maybe if you're, you have a Samsung Galaxy or one of those phones too, you can probably bring them to Japan nowadays. Um, but I, I can't say for sure, but iPhone, I would pretty much bet that you could bring it and activate it here if you've already purchased it in America. Um, okay, I think that's about it. So thanks for watching another long vlog. You know, these KTI ones tend to ramble on, but um, I'll attach this one to that one. There's good links in that one um, if you haven't watched that one. And uh, again, you know, feel free to throw comments down. People, other people see them and will comment. I have a lot of viewers that live in Japan. So they will throw in their story or be able to comment on your comment and give advice or tips. Um, so feel free to do that. Um, or, you know, go over to my Facebook page. Um, the link was in the last video. Um, my Argonauts, if you're looking, pretty obvious, um, on Facebook. And, uh, you know, throw a question up there and uh, people will be able to comment and read it and see my response, etc. So it's a good way to get information out there. Okay, uh, thanks for watching. Play some Angry Birds. My current obsession on uh, the iPad is Where's My Water, which I'm sure a lot of you know, and Cut the Rope. And uh, probably mm, one of the funnest games that use the English in a good way is Scribble Knots. Scribble Knots. Very good game. So, yeah, as you can see, I'm wearing my Tron t shirt. I'm very casual here. It's Saturday, um, and I'm in my office because, and I'll turn the camera around real quick. Um, see that stack of uh, things right there with my wallet on top? Yeah, that's some textbooks that I have to read and grade by Monday. So I'm a teacher. I'm here doing work at the weekend. What can I say? All right. So peace. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.